so this happened back in 2010. I was 10 at the time. So during this time, it was a snow blizzard. It hit our city out of nowhere, as our weather is known to be bipolar and have late winters. I lived with my cousin at the time. The snow blizzard went on for a while. Thick snow, freezing. This blizzard was so unexpected that no one was prepared for it. Power was going out, people buying out the water supplies in stores. I remember seeing on the news that people were using barbecue grills inside their homes for warmth. This mainly occurred in the less fortunate areas, and even though we lived in an apartment, we were fortunate enough to have our power on and other stuff that we needed. To sum up how this blizzard was affecting us, it was cold to the point that trees were falling. I lived on a giant pond, which where if you go on our balcony, it would be water. Well, that was frozen. So, me being the ten-year-old that I am, who doesn't want to play in the snow? So me and my cousin, who was 18 at the time, played out in the snow in the daytime. We practically did that every day whenever we got bored. But one day he and I went outside in the parking lot outside of my apartment, basically in front of my home. The only difference this time was that we went to go play in the snow at 6pm, and it had already been dark by this time because of daylight savings. We waited until it stopped snowing till we went out. So we were playing like normal, building snowmen and walls, anything normal that you do in the snow, right? Well, we decided to attempt to make a snow wall, so we needed a lot of snow for that. Now, it had been snowing heavily, and where is the best spot to get a load of snow? Well, off cars that haven't moved, of course. And we start building this wall and I'm taking snow off of trunks of cars, as there are thick layers and it's the easiest spot to obtain a chunk of snow. After a few back and forth of getting snow off cars and bringing it to the wall we were building, I noticed that I hadn't touched my sister's boyfriend's car. There was a lot of snow since they hadn't left in a few days. I tell my cousin, hey, let's go get that snow. We're walking towards my sister's boyfriend's car, and then we were at it. We arrived at the trunk, and as soon as I grab a big two armfuls of snow, we hear a very loud click. In confusion, I look around, and then look down and around my car, my cousin, and there is a green light in the shape of a circle around us. Now this is freaky enough in the moment. I decided to look up to see what the source of the light was, and what do you know, there was nothing above us. So after noticing the light and nothing above us, I look at my cousin and we start running home. I'm freaked out, running, looking around everywhere as I run home, checking my surroundings, and I see a tree fall in the distance. Yeah, it was cold, like I mentioned earlier, that was common during this little blizzard, but for this to happen at the moment of this weird phenomenon added more chills to the story for me. My cousin and I got inside, and inside was my sister and his sister cooking. We rush in, freaking out, and they're questioning us what's wrong. We explain the chain of events that went down, and what do you know, just like anyone who hears these types of stories, they said we were stupid and crazy, and that we needed to stop playing. Okay, they don't believe us, and we brush it off as who would expect them to. Now, for the rest of that night, my cousin and I just kept peeking out the window very often. Our minds could not clear of that. We stayed up all night, shook, kept peeking out the window. We played Black Ops all night until 7am, still looking outside every five minutes or so. This was not something we were just going to forget let alone make this up. To this day, he still remembers the moment. A moment that should have been pure normal fun it turned into a creepy extraterrestrial sighting, which I believe. I'm 18 now, but the details are still clear to this day, as I've often thought about it ever since that moment. It's not something you forget. 
My cousin and I talk about this here and there when we see each other, but man, oh man, what a freaky incident. I don't expect you to believe me, but I have had this on my mind for way too long. It's just something too unreal to keep to myself. I've come here to share my experience, and I am looking for thoughts on it. What are your thoughts? What could it have been? Why did it target us? And why didn't it do anything to us? To this day, I have one too many unanswered questions, and they will never be answered. And I guess I'm just going to have to live with that. Thank you for reading. My childhood was spent in Santa Ana, California. I have pretty good memories there before my dad moved us down to Texas. There is one weird instance that I remembered, so I asked my mom about it and will now share it with you. We lived in this decently sized apartment complex. We were on the fourth floor, but there were up to five to six floors that I can remember. One of our upstairs neighbors was this beautiful Chinese lady, Sheila, with the cutest Pomeranian puppy. She was young, thin, had long black hair and had the prettiest eyes, and wore the prettiest clothing. She would always call my sister and I over to play with her puppy. Sometimes she would invite us inside of her home. I remember that her apartment seemed strange to me. All of her walls had shelves lined with porcelain dolls that I thought were very creepy. She also had Hello Kitty and Friends plushies all over her couch, and even on her floor. She had a huge pink frilly rug. I remember that, as a child, something about her apartment seemed off, but I didn't care because I loved having a pretty older friend with a dog. Sheila took a particular liking to me. I'm Mexican-American, but everyone has told me that I look Asian. This will be relevant later. Anywho, she kept telling me that I looked just like her porcelain dolls and that I was so beautiful. I was flattered because I looked up to Sheila, almost like an older, cool sister. My sister and I started frequenting Sheila's apartment more often mainly to play with the cute puppy. Her boyfriend started coming over more often. I remember thinking that he was too old for her and too ugly. I would catch him staring at me a lot, and at that time I couldn't understand why, but he made me feel uncomfortable. One time I got into a huge fight with the neighborhood kids and my sister, so I stopped playing with them and decided to pay Sheila a visit. Sheila seemed off, like she didn't really want me to be there. She had these, like, pink see-through glasses, and I remember I could see purple makeup, but now that I think about it, it might have been a bruise. From the background, I can hear her boyfriend say, Let her come in. I have a painting for her. Sheila reluctantly lets me in. The entire apartment was dark. All the blinds were closed, and it was super messy inside. Her boyfriend then hands me a painting he made of Winnie the Pooh. It's not very well drawn, and I don't really even like Winnie the Pooh that much. But he says, Are you? You're cute. Like Winnie the Pooh. I say thank you and quickly forget and start looking for the puppy. Once I find the puppy, I begin to pet it and cuddle it, when I hear from behind, something that I now know as moaning. I turn to see Sheila and her boyfriend are full on making out. I remember it very clearly because I had never seen anyone, for example my parents, kissing so sloppy and with tongues. I felt embarrassed and just looked away and continued to play with the dog and pretend that I wasn't paying attention but it continued for so long. I turned around once more, and he was fondling her chest. At this point, I felt very weird and just tell her that I need to go now and leave. Fast forward a few days later, and it's my birthday. Sheila comes over to drop off my birthday gift, and it's a porcelain doll. 
I pretend to like it and thank her and go back to playing with my friends. I can hear my mom talking with her at the doorway, and my mom keeps saying no over and over again. She seems like she's getting angry, but still trying to keep her composure. Finally, she shuts the door and gets back to the party. A few days later, I tell my mom that I'm going to go to Sheila's to play with her dog. She tells me no and to go play with the neighbor kids instead, and that she doesn't want me going with Sheila anymore. I don't think much of it and go play with the kids instead. Then, fast forward a few weeks and I stop at Sheila's, just to see that the apartment is empty. The blinds are open and I can see that the apartment is empty inside. Fast forward to today, and my mom tells me something that shocked me. That day at my party, Sheila was asking my mom if she could take me to Beijing with her, that she would buy me whatever I wanted, that she just wanted to show her family how a Mexican kid looked so much like them. I guess because I looked Asian in her eyes. She kept telling my mom that I could be a model, and that she could possibly help me become one as well. My mom thought that she was joking at first, but Sheila was persistent. My mom said that she basically had to shove her out the door because she wasn't leaving or taking no for an answer. I'm not sure what Sheila wanted with me, if that was even her real name. I just hope wherever she is that she's okay, and I hope that she never truly meant to hurt me. I will start off by saying that this is going to be a long post, so my apologies. This is the story of an encounter that lasted off and on for almost a decade. Me and the Pale Man. This starts around when I was 13 years old. It's worth mentioning that I didn't have a very good home life, but I also wasn't very aware of this fact. I suspected that maybe families were sometimes just like that. Houses were always this messy and decrepit. Parents were always either insanely controlling and accusatory, or they weren't around at all. At this point in my life, I would have to take the school bus to school. I would wake up very early to catch it, and it was almost always still dark outside when I walked to the bus stop. In the corner of my eye, there he would always be, in my yard. This tall, gangly figure. He was maybe seven feet tall, paper white skin, long arms, spindly and long fingers, a humanoid shaped body that was very thin and bony, and he had no face to speak of. He gave me a very serious sense of dread whenever I caught a glimpse of him, but oddly enough, he would just stand at the end of the yard. And when I would try to look at him, he'd vanish. I thought maybe it was just my imagination. As time went on, he would appear in different places. When we moved, he would be at our new house. I figured that I brought him there. Sometimes at night, when everyone was asleep and the house was dark, in the pitch black living room, I could swear that I saw him, standing in the middle of the room, or sitting on the couch. I avoided passing the living room at night altogether because of him. I was terrified of his presence. When I realized he probably wasn't going anywhere, I decided that I should name him. I had an issue with personalizing things growing up. I would give objects names and personalities. It prevented me from wanting to throw things away, and I still sometimes struggle with this, but in this instance, naming him was what I was using to be less scared of him, and I named him the Pale Man. As my mental health declined, and the emotional abuse I was facing became more apparent and rampant, he became more bold, it seemed. Sometimes when I would be in the shower, I would swear I could see him on the other side of the curtain. I would see it move slowly as if he were poking it. I would press back against the wall of the shower and watch him slowly scratch at the curtain. He never tried to open it. He never made noises. I could just see his familiar tall shadow from behind the curtain. 
he scared me, but I felt confident telling myself that he wasn't dangerous. One of the houses he followed us to had a long, poorly lit hallway, so any time of day, if my door was open, I would see him walk past, quietly and quickly in the dark. It almost became comforting to have him there. My mother was rarely home, and my brothers didn't seem to notice him. It's like he was there to check up on me. I started to whisper into the dark living room at night. Good night, pale man. And I would see him slowly wave from the couch. Fast forward to now. I live with my girlfriend. I started seeing a therapist. Though I haven't mentioned pale man, when I started taking medication and addressing issues and old trauma, he started to show up less and less. The last I saw him, he was in the living room, standing. He was too tall for the room, so his head was a little bent forward. I waved at him. He waved back at me. I said to him, Good night, pale man. Thank you. He bowed his head a bit, and I walked to my bed. He stayed there. In the morning, as always, he was not there, but then the following nights he also hasn't shown. It was a bit sad to have him leave, but I'm sure it's for the better. I like to think he moved on to better things, and I know that I sure did. To begin, I apologize if this is the incorrect subreddit or an inquiry that isn't allowed here. I posted this on r slash cryptozoology, but after giving it a bit of thought, I believe this may be some sort of supernatural entity. Anyways, a bit of backstory. I live next to a heavily wooded area, as we call it back in the boonies in Virginia. I walk up and down our large driveway with my dog to exercise on my day off of work. This morning I was walking down my driveway as usual, with my dog trotting beside me. This is where things get bizarre. I heard rustling in the tall ferns next to me. I look over to see the rear end of a thin, lanky, pure white creature walking into the trees. I initially thought it was an albino deer, as it had a similar body type. My dog instinctively ran down to chase it. As the creature approached a large hill running up into the rest of the wooded area, my dog froze, like still as a statue. He didn't bark or move a muscle. He wouldn't respond when I called for him. Now, my dog is a large territorial boxer slash hound mix, the kind of dog that is sweet towards those who he is close to, but would give his life to defend his home. Since I live next to the woods, there are many woodland critters running around. You'll often hear my dog chasing and howling at these animals throughout the day. Basically, it was odd for him to not chase after this creature that was so close to him. I've never seen him freeze like that before. That's when I saw the creature moving up the hill on two legs. It was like it transitioned from quadruped to biped in an instant. It moved insanely fast, given how it appeared to struggle to walk. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It just lurched like each step was painful for it, yet it knew what it was doing. It was similar to waddling, but more jagged. I caught a glimpse of its pelt then, and it wasn't the creamy sort of color that albino animals typically have, but it was pure white, like it was some sort of ivory silhouette. I didn't see the rippling muscles beneath it or anything, it was just like a white sheet. In that moment, I saw a pair of deer flank its side and stand as motionless as my dog until it passed. They then bolted off into the trees as if frightened. Once the creature was out of sight, my dog ran over to me as if broken from a trance. He seemed a lot more anxious after this encounter as well. Once again, I do apologize if this isn't the right place for this, and if so, please do direct me to the right sub for inquiry. I'm extremely bewildered and somewhat frightened of this unknown creature residing near my home. At least if I can pinpoint what it is, 
I can feel a bit safer. Giving an identity to the unknown can help me take precautions. I've read a lot of these stories, and I couldn't remember if I'd had any sort of odd encounters, but when I was tidying my room this weekend, I found my old diary from when I was around 9 or 10. Before I moved to Berlin, my mom and I lived in Sheffield. Because of this, we sometimes met some of her friends when we went back to Sheffield. This time, though, they came to visit us, and we decided to spend the day out. Now, I had never had a creepy encounter before, but on this day I had two. First, we went to the park, and me and my little sisters were all playing together, having a good time, whilst my mom and dad were chatting with their two friends, one of which was my fairy godmother. We're not religious, so my mom just always called her that. After a while, a panicked woman and her kid walked into the park, and told my mom and other parents that a weird man was walking around, asking people if they wanted to touch his... snake. As she said it in German, though, it was clear that it wasn't a euphemism in this context. The man had a real snake, and was carrying it around, offering people to hold it, apparently including offering it to this little girl who was crying her eyes out. My mom decided that it would be best if we got a move on, but my fairy godmother wanted a coffee, so we split up into two groups. My mom, fairy godmother, and myself, and my dad went with his mate and my two little sisters, who went to a different park further away. We went off to find a little cafe, and they both got a hot drink. We headed off to meet up with the rest, and I tripped. My mom and fairy godmother had walked in front of me, but they didn't notice me fall. Instead, a man grabbed my arm and held on tight. At first, I thought he was trying to help me get up, but he was just holding my arm tightly. I completely froze and didn't say anything. So, I had now been separated from my mom and I couldn't see her anymore. The man just held on to me and I didn't know what to do. My mom was about to cross the road when she noticed that I wasn't next to her and turned around and couldn't see me. She called my name, and I just looked up at the man, and he let go, and I fell back to the ground. My mom called me again, and the two of them started walking back to where I was on the ground, right past the man who was trying to nonchalantly chalk past her. She saw that I was laying there, completely white, and asked what had happened. And as soon as I told her, my fairy godmother ran around the corner to where the man had ever so casually jogged leaving me with my mom who was holding me. Apparently, when she had looked around the corner, the man was legging it down the road, and was already on the opposite side of the road, and my godmother, not knowing Berlin at all, didn't know where he had run off to. Overall, nothing ever came of it, and seeing as how I had forgotten this even happened for nearly ten years, I feel like I got off easy. I used to deliver pizzas for a pizzeria in Cape Town, South Africa, when I was in university to make some extra cash. I used to deliver to the same house quite often. Incidentally, this place is quite close to where I lived at the time. There was nothing overtly strange about the place, except that whoever would receive the pizza would normally take quite long to come to the door and would always ask me to pass them the pizza through the security gate instead of unlocking it, and making it easier for everyone involved. One quiet night, a call comes through for this house, and I collect the pizzas and get to the house reasonably quick. This time, a lady who I had never seen at this house before opens the door and lets me in. Not entirely uncommon to be let into a customer's house, so I don't think anything of it. And she points me towards the kitchen, which is down quite a long corridor, and asks me to drop the pizzas there. And she follows me all the way. Still, nothing weird, though. The passage opened up into an open-plan dining room and lounge area. 
through this area is the kitchen through a door on the left. As I was passing through the dining room slash lounge area, I saw something that sticks with me to this day. An old looking dentist chair with a person lying on it. Whether this guy was alive or not, I still don't know. He had a sheet covering his whole body, except the very top of his head, and his feet which were duct taped together. The lady that opened the door was still right behind me. She said absolutely nothing. We went into the kitchen and she paid me for the pizzas. At this point, I was either expecting to be attacked by this lady or someone else hiding somewhere, or to be scared by the guy under the sheet as some part of some sick joke. Not wanting to give anything away, I didn't say anything, and I prepared myself to either defend myself or not be frightened should it be a joke. I walked out towards the front door, double checking to see what I saw was correct and not just my imagination. The lady was still behind me the whole way. She closed the door behind me as I left and said nothing. To this day, I still have no idea what was happening in that house. It could have been some joke, but I really don't think that it was. The presence of a dentist chair still makes no sense. I didn't see anything else that would suggest the residents of the house collected weird paraphernalia. I drive past that house quite often, and I still wonder if I was in any danger. I don't know how to tell this story without sounding crazy or nutty, but thinking about it still gives me chills to this day, especially since it still makes no sense to me at all. Maybe someone can help me figure out what I saw. But okay, here's my story. I was walking through the city that I was living in on a snowy Saturday, heading to my friend's house. There was a good bit of snow on the ground, and for what it is, usually a busy city, it was pretty dead outside. I saw maybe five or six cars on my 20 minute walk, and maybe 10 people along the way. But when I was about three minutes from my buddy's house, I saw this kid crossing the street with the backpack on. At first, I didn't think anything of him, but as we got closer, I got a really off feeling in my gut. I went from a happy mindset to feeling sick, fearful, and cautious in an instant. I was initially staring at the ground when crossing, but the feeling made me look up at the kid who was a few feet in front of me, staring me dead in the eyes. When I locked eyes with his, I noticed that something was wrong with his eyes and smile. His pupils were huge and yellow, with narrow oval slits down the middle, kind of like snake eyes. I remember him blinking, but his eyelids never moved. He had an evil smirk on his face, which made me feel nervous. When we passed each other, I looked back behind me, and as my head turned completely, he looked back and gave me a smile, and through the small slit of his lips, I saw his teeth. Each one was separated by a small gap, and his teeth were kind of pointed. I turned back around and kept walking, but when I got to the other side of the street, I stopped for a second and the feeling disappeared. I looked back around and the kid was gone. There was nowhere that he could have turned, ran, or hid, nor did he have a reason to run and hide. I told my friend when I got to his house, and he thought that I was crazy, but I know what I saw, and the feeling that I had, and it was as real as the ground that we stand on. Has anyone had anything like this happen to them? Can anyone help explain what I saw? Hello Reddit, and greetings from Italy. Here I have a story that I wanted to share, to see if someone had experienced something similar or to find some explanations. I was maybe 7 or 8 years old, now I'm 22, and I was in my bedroom getting ready to sleep. My mother was in the other room waiting for my dad to come back from work. 
the door of my bedroom was closed. It was summer, I guess, because I remember having the windows open. The room was dark with no light, except for the moonlight and the light coming from our garden. As soon as I lay in bed, I remember that I wasn't really tired. I wanted to stay up with my parents. But I looked towards the nearest wall, about 30 centimeters from the wall, and I see this clear figure slowly standing and looking at me. I start screaming my lungs out, and in a couple seconds, which felt like an eternity for me, my parents ran in, scared by the screaming. As soon as they got in, the figure disappeared, and I'm looking at just the wall. I'm really scared, and I start crying, and I tell everything to my parents, who decided to call the nearest priest to bless the house, and me. Anyway, I remember this figure really clearly, even though I was really, really young. The same night, I described it as an alien with a black coat, like death. And in fact, it was this little figure, maybe one and a half meters tall, dark green or dark gray, with a black coat on its body and a hood on its head. The eyes were long, oblique, and black. I could see his face thanks to the light coming from the windows. I remember a small mouth, and that's about it. This is what I saw, and I don't think I was imagining an alien this way. I mean, I've never even seen movies with aliens in my life, and never really been very interested. And as I remember, if you ask a kid to draw an alien, he would probably draw a really tall alien, without any clothes. So that's it. I don't know what to think. If you need any more information, just ask, and I'll be glad to answer if I can. Okay, so as the title says, I don't know if this was a UFO or not because I was inside when it happened. It was after one of my parents' parties. A whole lot of people were sleeping except me and my dog. I was trying to go to sleep in my room, but I couldn't. I closed my eyes, thinking I would fall asleep if I did. Next thing I know, my dog is freaking out and wants to get out of the room as soon as possible. I hear this humming slash buzzing surrounding the room, along with these vertical lines of light moving coming from the window in front of me. So me and my dog leave that room quickly, and my home speakers were playing music with the volume getting louder. My parents and their friends just woke up and acted like nothing happened at all. I still don't know why this happened. I checked the phones afterwards and Spotify wasn't even open. It's been like one and a half, maybe two years since that moment, but I still remember it very well. Nothing like this has ever happened since. I just wanted to share my story, even though it wasn't that crazy. I've been a long time lurker on Reddit, especially this forum and I finally decided to post this life-changing and defining experience that I had when I was about 9 or 10 years old. When I say life-changing and defining, I truly do mean that. Ever since I've had this experience, I've had an obsession with the other world, and I know in my heart that there is a lot more to this earth than what we can see with our eyes. I had a lot of really strange experiences at this property, but what I'm writing about was the beginning of a weird few years. Backtrack about 13 years ago, and I'm 9 or 10 years old. My parents and I had just moved up to a mountain in the Gold Coast hinterland, Tambourine Mountain, in Australia. Absolutely beautiful place, full of national parks and tropical rainforests. To explain the layout of our old property, there was the main house, and about a hundred meters to the left of the main house was a large shed. Separating the main house from the shed was a garden area with a little path leading from the shed to the house. It was just after dark, maybe 7pm, 
and my mom was inside the main house making dinner and, for some reason, I was outside with my dad at the shed, whilst he was unloading things from the back of the truck with one of his mates. I helped for a little bit, but when it came to the bigger objects, I was just sitting around and admiring our beautiful new property. I can still remember this like it happened yesterday. So I'm sitting down and waiting for my dad to finish up so that we can go back into the main house. And for some reason, and to this day I still do not know why, I had this intense urge to look over to my right into the bushes, which separated the main house from the shed. At first I couldn't really tell what it was, but the longer I stared at it, the more I realized that it was not a trick of the lights or my imagination. About 30 feet away from me was a small thing, walking parallel to where I was sitting, wading through the bushes. It was walking at a normal pace, but pushing the bushes back to make way for itself. I could only see the side profile of this thing, but I could see that over its body it was wearing something black almost like a black cloak. From the side profile of its face, I could make out a pointed nose with sharp cheekbones, and a large hole where I'm assuming its eye was. It was probably about three or four feet high, and had the stature of a small child. I saw it for probably about five seconds. I think that was probably the first time in my life I had an adrenaline rush, my heart dropped to my stomach and I felt sick and confused. I couldn't speak or move. All I could feel was utter fear and terror in this thing. I stood up and quickly bolted inside the shed and waited for my dad to finish up, because no way in hell was I going to walk back to the house by myself. It never looked at me, for all I know it could have been before, but when I saw it... It did not look at me, nor acknowledge me. I didn't sleep in my own bed until I was 13 after that experience. I was utterly scared of the dark, and still to this day, I don't like going outside after dark by myself. The older I got, the more I began to research paranormal topics. I tried for so long to convince myself that this was just a hallucination, but I know in my heart that it wasn't. The best description that I could give it would be that it looked like an alien grey, but the thing still had proportionate features, if that makes sense. I know this sounds insane, but it had the features of a goblin. Pointed ears, sharp cheekbones. It was definitely wearing something black over the top of its shoulders, as I did not see legs. The most messed up aspect of this experience for me is that to this day, I still have weird nightmares about that property. I've never forgotten that night, nor how it has molded and changed my perception of this world. There is so much more out there that we do not know about. Has anyone else ever had an experience similar to this? I have only ever had two encounters with things considerably supernatural that I could vividly remember. One may have just have been the wind causing my cousin's bedroom window to rattle. It rattled every time I denied that my cousin saw a ghost, like he saw the night before. This happened many, many years ago. Anyway, the other one happened in either 2013 or 2014 on my senior year of high school. My then-girlfriend at the time claimed her house was like a portal between dimensions of the living and the dead, and that she couldn't shower for more than five minutes because there was a black spirit of a little girl in her shower that could, maybe, harm her. She claimed that her family was Catholic, but they had strange practices involving spirits. I don't know if that had to do with her Chinese ancestry or what. They believed that in each generation of their family, someone has to take on some kind of burden for the rest of their lives involving spirits. She told me that her mom was supposed to be a nun, but then backed out on the day of her coronation, so apparently my girlfriend took on that burden in her stead. 
She also claimed that ever since we got together, she'd been having the same dream every night, where spirits from Filipino folklore would kill her family in brutal ways. Like how everyone died in the end of that Blood Sea anime. Anyway, one day, she conducted an experiment for me and my curious friend. We did it in the sports complex of our high school after class hours. And mind you, I don't have the so-called third eye. I say so-called because I'm like Philip from the Bible and won't believe spirits are truly real until I see them for myself. Back to the story. My friend and I were extremely curious to witness some paranormal phenomenon, so she gathered us and had the three of us sit cross-legged in a triangle formation facing each other on the ground. Me and my friend took turns. I went first. I had to cover my ears with my hands and shut my eyes without peeking or opening them until told. I had to listen to the silence to hear them as instructed. She told me to stop listening and open my eyes if I felt like a presence was getting too close to me. After a few seconds of focusing and trying to ignore sounds from the environment, I picked up on what sounded like two grown males maybe between the ages of 30 to 40, having a conversation in, get this, Latin. So, priests, maybe? I've also never heard Latin before, other than that one chant in Adventure Time, but I was certain that it was Latin. My school is run by Jesuit Catholic priests. I'm not sure how old my school is exactly, but... Maybe it's old enough, like other schools in the Philippines, where there used to be priests, nuns, and friars running the school, and now their souls still linger. That's why I'm almost certain they were conversing in Latin. The sound of their voices were growing louder and more audible in my ears as if they were walking side by side and coming down the steps behind me. Even though I was a good 20 feet away from the staircase, my girlfriend tried to wake me and get me to stop, but I wanted to keep on listening. I was so intrigued. When their voices got so close that they sounded like they were speaking in full volume right next to my ear, she grabbed a hold of my arm, and that's when I opened my eyes. My friend went next, and I observed him, his facial expressions showing the same level of intrigue as mine. Afterwards, he said that he had heard a little girl crying distantly. My girlfriend told me that when we were done, had I not opened my eyes a second sooner, one of the spirits could have entered my body. I still think about it to this day, and I know it would be best to keep away from all of that. The topic of the supernatural always tickles my curious pickle. Though people I know who claim to see and hear say they wish they could just be normal like everyone else. So, if it's real, I'll just continue to ponder and keep my pickle on the safe side. So, in this house, I saw people from the Civil War era. I had dreams of war and the carnage, as well as one time I saw an entity who looked like my mom. We moved out when I was five or six, and my mom, me, and my grandmother lived there. Dream number one. So this was about eight months ago. I had a dream that me and two of my friends went to a house I used to live in to see if we could find some stuff that was left behind in the move. Keep in mind, this house was built pre-Civil War and used as a makeshift hospital during the battle that occurred there. When we moved out, the bank took ownership of the house from my uncle, who we were renting it from, as he took the back off trying to fix the foundation. So, anyway, we go to the back and the house looks how I last saw it with the back torn off and the patio gone. We go to where it was tore off, and instantly the house was back to how it was when I was a kid. When we go in, we start having paranormal experiences, and demons are everywhere. Something that looked like my mom tormented us, and the house kept going between how it was when I was a kid, to dilapidated with the back off, and then back to pristine condition, like what it may have looked like the day it was built. 
I take a small box of my grandma's and leave, and when I get home, the stuff from the house had followed me home. I find out that a demon binded to my grandma's box, and then I wake up. Dream number two. I have what I can only assume is a time slip, and I'm in said house during a house party in the late 1800s. It's a semi-formal dinner party. Then, dream number three. It starts in first person, and I go through the cattle gate from the woods, onto a dirt road, and I walk up to the house. It's a small, two-story country-style home that has an identical color scheme to the real-life house I used to live in from Dream 1. It looks like a different version of the same house. It's around 5 or 6 p.m. in the country, in a rural place, and it's spring or summer, as all of the trees are full of leaves and there is thick vegetation. Then the dream shifts into third-person view, and I see myself opening the door and knowing I'm in the middle of restoring the house, and that the house is mine. I never see the inside of the house, and this dream has happened twice within a week, the second time happening directly after dream number two, like dream number two cut, and then immediately this dream started again. It's the exact same dream both times. So, today... My mom had a dream about the house that was similar to mine. What could this even be an example of? Is this some kind of haunting? Or what? P.S. The house has been torn down since 2015 or 2016. My family and I were driving from Ohio to Wyoming one holiday season to visit family about 10 years ago. Due to storms farther north, we traveled straight west instead of northwest at first and split the trip at Omaha, staying the night before heading up through Nebraska into South Dakota. Once we were far enough north, we turned west onto I-90. At that point, it had been over an hour since we saw anywhere that might have had a public restroom, and we were on state routes with no rest areas. Those of you who have traveled with a young kid know that's close to their bladder slash boredom's limit, and our daughter was begging to stop somewhere to pee. South Dakota was similarly deserted, or even worse, as we headed west. Finally, we reached a desperately needed rest stop, as my, at the time, five-year-old and I both needed to be by then. Just as we pulled in, the truck that had been following us for a while pulled in, too. I didn't think too much of that at first, until I started to open the door. My head was turned to the right, where the truck just parked a couple of spots over. My eyes met the driver's, and I just shivered. He was a skinny white guy straggly gray-brown beard and dark eyes. I could see that he was wearing a dingy, dirty blue plaid shirt. He got out of his 90s brown and cream truck and started rummaging in his bed. I told my husband that I didn't want to go into the rest stop alone because of the guy and the weird feeling that I got from him. He thought I was being a little silly but agreed to come in with us. At that point, the next stop was Wall, South Dakota about a hundred miles away according to the huge billboard we'd passed advertising it. He figured he'd better empty his bladder even though he didn't particularly feel the need. I grabbed our daughter, and we headed inside, followed by the guy who'd finished rummaging at his truck but wasn't carrying anything when I glanced back. My daughter and I did our business in the women's restroom and head back out to the lobby. As expected, my husband was already out there since he didn't have a small human to chaperone. The old guy was also in the tiny lobby area. He was just standing there staring at my husband. My husband rushed us back to our car. As we were buckling in, he locked the doors. And then he told me that the guy hadn't even gone into the restroom and was just standing in the lobby the whole time. He agreed with me that we might have just had a close call and he was glad that it hadn't just been me and our daughter there. However, that's not the end of the story. Remember how I mentioned Wall and that it was 100 miles away? Well, that was 100 miles of pretty empty landscape, 
but a decent number of turnoffs from the interstate. We didn't see the truck following us, and we thought the whole episode was behind us. Except when we stopped in Wall to grab lunch and some road snacks. Plus, look around at this homey but fun little tourist trap in the middle of nowhere. And we saw the guy in the store not even 20 feet from us. Same face, beard, dirty plaid shirt. Thankfully, we'd already eaten, so since he was staring at us again, we quickly paid for our snacks and trinkets and got the heck out of there. Thankfully, we didn't see him again, but I was seriously creeped out until we reached our relatives in Wyoming safely, with no other sight of that truck. A couple of years ago, when I was a child, I'd had around a dozen encounters with what I call little people, but I can only remember three of them vividly because most of the encounters were really just me catching a glimpse of these little suckers running towards something, and then me running after it, only for it to disappear behind a wall or some furniture. If I remember correctly, my first encounter was when I was around nine years old, and I was in my room upstairs drawing something, but decided to go downstairs to get something, and that's when I saw it. A small, dark humanoid figure only standing around two feet tall. It was humanoid, but not quite human. Its skin was a dark gray. Its limbs were very skinny and slightly longer than they should be and it had a disproportionately large head. It was difficult to make out any features because it was full-on sprinting towards the stairs, but since this was the first time I was witnessing something this bizarre, everything seemed to slow down. So it was a running blur of gray, but I was eventually able to make out some key features from other experiences. The weirdest part is that I didn't really get a bad sense of malice from it, as one would expect to get from something this freaky. So instead of running or screaming, I ran after it, but it disappeared when it got out of view. The other two encounters were pretty similar to this, and I noticed that it always occurred at the top of the stairs. I had a couple of other strange experiences which were less friendly and one that crossed the line for me. And that's a story for another time, but to summarize it, when I was around 11, someone spoke to me when I was home alone, and that was the only time in my life when I actually feared for my life. So I sprinted out of my apartment and stayed outside until my mom came home, and I wasn't able to sleep for months due to constant noises at night. That said, I'm getting off topic. I just want to know if anyone has had similar experiences, or if someone has answers to what the hell those things are because... The only thing I know is that apparently this isn't the first time things like this happened. My father and my aunts have also experienced odd dark entities when they were children, and even as adults too. If I ever see these things again, then I'll try to snap a picture, and if I can't do that in time, then I'll make an illustration of what they look like. This happened whenever I was a teen. I'm 26 years old now. This is important to mention because after all those years, I still feel bad if I think about that day. My parents decided to move, and I went with them to look at some houses. The first two were okay, but not quite what my parents were looking for, since they wanted a house with a big backyard. The realtor decided to show them a newly vacant house. The owner was an old lady who had died, and their sons decided to sell the house. My parents aren't superstitious or religious people, nor am I, so we didn't see a problem with it. We arrived at the place, the realtor opened it, and we entered the garage and everything was fine. Until I went into the living room. I almost let out a gasp because the atmosphere was so oppressive like there were invisible eyes everywhere observing and judging me. It felt like there was a weight on my chest, 
I couldn't even breathe properly. I left the room and went out to the backyard to catch some air when I saw a small room connected to the back of the house. I entered it out of curiosity and saw that it was a small empty room with humidity stains on the wall. Just when I was about to enter the room to see if there was anything interesting, something figuratively punched my chest with so much sadness and anger that I almost ran screaming. I slammed the door and entered the house again, going to one of the empty bedrooms and sitting on the floor, trying to catch my breath. I couldn't stay though, because the feeling of being watched and judged by numerous invisible eyes returned with even more intensity. At this point, I left the house to find my parents talking with the realtor in the front garden. I grabbed my mom by her arm and begged her to go home. After some awkward excuses, my parents finally went home. I didn't say a word during the way back, but when I arrived home, I just cried and cried and cried for hours. My parents got concerned and asked me what was happening, and I just kept repeating, I don't know, I don't know, I'm feeling so sad. I felt like I would never be happy again. I still think about that day, and I still get shivers. As I write this, the hair on my arms are standing up. Last thing I heard about that house is that someone else bought it and turned it into a restaurant. This is something that I didn't realize the severity of until I was older. My mom had left me and my brother home alone. It was midday. My brother was 12, maybe 13, so I was 9 years old. I was watching him play Xbox in our living room. He had his headset on, talking to his friends. There was a knock from the door in our carport. I run and answer the door without looking. It's a grown man that I've never seen before. We're separated by the screen door, which, at the time, was unlocked. He asks, Are your parents home? Horror washes over me. First of all, he's knocking from the carport, which is strange in and of itself. A stranger would knock on our front door. And our carport is empty. We only had the one car, and my mother had taken it. The man knows that my parents are not home. So... I'm afraid. I don't know why, but I am scared. Immediately, my brother in the other room comes to mind. I've never had a father figure. My brother has always been the one who made me feel safe. The strongest person in the whole world. Someone who could protect me in any situation. How most people would regard their father, I think. I feel as though I can barely speak. Wide-eyed, I managed to stutter out, No, but my uh, big brother is here. Without even a moment's pause, this man reaches for the screen door and starts to open it. Like an act of God, or divine intervention, an arm reaches out from behind me over my shoulder and grabs the door. My brother pushes past me, holding the door, forcing the man back with his presence. They go out into the carport, and he closes the door behind him. The man tells my brother that he was looking to buy some crappy old swing set that was in our front yard at the time. My brother comes back in without saying anything to me, puts on his headset, and continues playing. I sit down as well and continue watching him. I don't believe we ever told my mom. It pretty much just faded from my memory, but... As I got older, it has become one of the scariest things that has ever happened to me. It was creepy. Not so much because of what happened, but what could have. Unnerving how absolutely oblivious we were. Part of me thinks that the man was planning to lock me in a room, rob the place, and leave. But people can be so evil. There was one ordinary random night that I remember in detail when I was about 13 years old. It was like any other school night, going 
going to bed around 8 or 9 p.m. in my room alone. I hadn't yet fallen asleep because I had a habit of listening to music while or right before actually sleeping, so my earbuds were in full effect. As I lay in my bed, I'm facing the wall with the door to my backside. I just felt... something. It was almost like that feeling you get when someone is staring at you and you can feel it. I was in bed for five minutes or so, and already my younger brothers, who are one and two years younger than me, are annoying me, I thought. I turn around and there she was. An almost see-through white, floaty, blurry silhouette of a lady with no legs, just floating and holding a baby with its head covered under its blanket. I couldn't see her face clearly, and she just stood there, not really looking at me, but past me, if that makes any sense. I only looked at her for a few seconds, frozen. I rubbed my eyes really fast with my blanket and sat up ready to scream, but when I looked again, she vanished. I haven't seen anything like that since. Has anyone gone through anything similar? Coming up to Christmas has reminded me of something that happened a few years back. My family and my in-laws were enjoying Christmas at our house. It was evening, so with the kids, there were six of us. I came out of the downstairs toilet, when out of the corner of my eye I saw something at the top of the stairs. I assumed someone else had needed the toilet and couldn't wait until I had finished. I walked past the kitchen, seeing my wife getting snacks. Then I got to the living room and everyone else was there. There's only one way to get to the living room and nobody had passed me. Who was at the top of the stairs? I did go back and look up the stairs, but there was nobody there. I would like to say that I rushed up and checked each room, but I didn't. It's not the first time that I've seen someone lurking, but this was the most memorable, and a specific time when I was certain that I could account for everyone in the house. So, this happened roughly six years ago, in Pennsylvania, but I remember it like it was yesterday. I was working for Burger King at the time, and just got off my night shift at roughly midnight. As I was driving home, I saw a light that was about 50 feet off the ground. It had an orangish glow like a streetlight. I could see it very clearly. The night sky was clear and there was no fog at all. I thought it was just a new streetlight that got put up. I just kept staring at it. Out of nowhere, it shot straight up into the air and just vanished. It gave me chills and made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Ever since that day, I always look at the sky on my drives home from my job that I have now. Could that have been extraterrestrial? So, that, my friends, was a collection of true scary stories. Kind of a, a mix match of really strange and scary stories. All of these redone from the ground up. All of these were from way, way back. Like, we're talking March and April of 2020, a couple from February of 2020. So back whenever my channel was still in its infancy. And as promised, I said I would redo some of these stories as time went on. And here we are at the fourth remake video. I think third or fourth. I'm not really sure. But yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed. Like I said, just a, just a mix match of tons of strange different stories. No real theme. Just scary stories. And as I mentioned last time, it's over an hour long. Or it is an hour long. One of the two. Because I said that whenever I remake these stories, I want to try to make the videos an hour so you guys have reason to rewatch them, right? If you've already if you've been around a long time, you've already heard these. And I would rather you have reason to re-listen. Though, 
Maybe the fact that we're four years into the future and I'm doing them again, and my style has totally changed, is enough reason to listen to them. So, As you could probably tell, I am um, congested. Uh, we'll see what that is. I think it's just sinus infection stuff, because the weather has been stupid. Um, it went from like 70 back down to 30, and my sinuses hate the weather like this, so who knows. Um... We'll, we'll see how it goes. It's not really getting worse yet, so I think it's just sinuses. I, I've always had sinus issues. Though I gotta say, for like the past uh, three-ish years, I haven't really had many sinus issues, though I've had COVID twice. Um, So I guess I'm just due for a sinus problem. <laughs> Why not, right? Whatever. It is what it is. Anyways, friends, hopefully y'all enjoyed the stories. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, well, welcome, happy to have you here. But please also consider subscribing, as that does help. And leave a comment letting me know you're new to the channel. I like to welcome people. I try to res try to respond to as many comments as I can. Whenever they come in as notifications on my phone, I try to respond to them. I do okay. I don't do the best, but I do okay. So, anyways, yeah. You can also join Patreon or Super... No, Patreon or Memberships. We get early access to content like this. You can also do a super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel. Never expected, always appreciated. Yeah. Well, that said, friends. Hope you're having a lovely day and a lovely week so far. And I hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, of course, remember you are loved. You are valid. You are important. You're the best you that you can be. Don't forget it. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And until next time, my friends, much love and sleep well.